On this episode, things start easy. That's it. Th that's all there is. Then suddenly, non-integers. Oh, right. Oh, comma values. Oh, I don't like that. Which lead us down the path of madness. Why would you do this? Why are you doing this, Zep? What are you doing? Mm, hi everybody, this is Christian from Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to Advanced Schmatt Tutorial. Good morning! As I, as I said last time around, a rare morning recording today. For At least it's for me. I don't know about you. We just finished like a speed run of all of the editor fixes. The editors have amazing new capabilities. I really love them. Uh, today we want to tackle the new things. I, I just labeled them all huge chunk of, of labeling <laughs> it's just new things um mid difficult kind of stuff i think we're gonna begin with something some 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 small stuff um load loading the coach map okay i already have here something wait a when moving enemy mm, maybe we're gonna do that today uh, another thing i want to do as well is i want to do the cut off simple gameplay stuff cut off and the dead zone Cutoff is the thing that where uh, enemies are no longer firing once they're below a certain threshold. Dead zone is the thing where enemies don't receive damage when they haven't fully entered the screen yet. Um, right, what else um, do we have? Well, we have sound rep repeated, repetitive explosions. And then maybe later, I'm not, I'm not sure if this comes now, shadow. Hover, maybe that's gonna be next episode. Hover, because that's a bit of a, I'm, I'm a bit worried about that. Bullet canceling. Bullet origin, retargeting, -tar question mark. Retargeting is this idea that if you're firing multiple bullets and they're all uh, aimed, how do we do so that they keep, that, like they follow the, the player, right? When we create multiple bullets, uh, they are just offset in time, but they will all fire in the same direction. So maybe there is a way of us doing some retargeting. We're gonna see. Yeah, these are the main things. So let's just go through this stuff and address the things as they come up. First of all, I want to introduce this idea of a cutoff and I want to introduce this, this thing of the dead zone. Let's do the cutoff first. Um, where do we define these things? Here in start game, maybe, hmm? Right, yeah, yeah, because we have speed here, so let's go cut off. Um, I'm not sure what the values should be. Um, I'm gonna set it to, um, um, so cut off is this idea that they're at the bottom of the screen, right? So 128 would be the very bottom of the screen, that means that cut off wouldn't work, uh, that players would, uh, that sh enemies would always shoot. Um, let's go cut off minus 32. That's what the lower fourth of the screen, right? I have like a little thing that calculates things that are selected. 96, let's go with 96. And if that's too high, we can still change it. And while we're here, let's just also go with dead zone. I think dead zone is a bit weird name because it's like the opposite of that, like the enemies don't die <laughs> in this zone, right? So it's not a dead zone, it's, it's an alive zone. <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking eight. Uh, that's really narrow, um, but I think it's just enough to make the enemy, because we don't have that much vertical space anyway, so I'm kind of worried. I'm kind of worried. Let's try this and let's see how that works. Um, right, so let's try to do both things. Do enemies. Do enemies. Oh, oh no. I, oh, no. Uh, right here. I, I already remember this. So the way we do this right now, that's a bit superfluous, to be honest. So the way we do this, that uh, like we do not process the bull queue if the enemy is not staged, which I don't know if we need that. I don't think we're going to have situations where the enemies, because I think that's a problem that we can solve in the brain, in the brain design, right? So the problem is that if the enemy is off screen, I don't want the enemy to be firing bullets. Uh, which might be important, for example, at the bidding when, when you spawn an enemy off screen, uh, the enemy is flying in, and I don't, I want to, the enemy to start firing bullets once it actually merges onto the screen. But again, I don't think that's going to be a problem. 
I, I think it's going to be fine. Um, what I'm more interested in is this cutoff thing. So if cutoff is, gr uh, or if e dot y is greater than cutoff, then, no, it's, if it's smaller than cutoff, let's go smaller equals cutoff. <laughs> um, so we're only processing the bullet queue when the enemy is really high in the screen and once it reaches a certain threshold, it no longer fires. Uh, well, we might not do a cutoff for boss enemies. Boss enemies might get down there and do stuff and we want to make sure that we don't do that. But for now, it's fine. And, and that's cutoff. That's it. Th that's all there is. Um, yeah, let's let's see. Let's, let's see. We, we know that there is a place. Let's let's watch those ground enemies because they are definitely firing constantly. Okay. So here they should. Oh, they're still firing. No, now they're no longer firing. Okay, here they're firing. Okay, now they stopped firing. Maybe th 32, maybe that 96 was actually a little bit too, too little. Maybe it's too little. Let's go 98 and uh, let's go 90, I mean. Let's draw the cut off. You can see the cut off there. I shouldn't have shot at it. Okay, now you can see it's no longer fine. Maybe that was the problem was that it was perfectly synced. Yeah, they stopped firing. You see, the bullets were still flying, but they're no longer firing. That's the problem, the bullets are fired. And, and and so like they're, the bullets are still flying and you might think like that once an enemy reaches a certain threshold it shouldn't fire but you know the bullets will haven't fired before so the bullets that you are flying towards you have been fired before the enemy cr crossed the threshold the, the cutoff threshold I'm, I'm i'm fine with this for now um let me also draw the the, the dead zone uh dead zone So yeah, that would be the dead zone. Now it's kind of the dead zone is a bit difficult because we we uh, most of our enemies are really small, and for the small enemies, the dead zone makes doesn't make much difference. Uh, the dead zone will get more interesting when the enemies are really big or flying slowly. Um, okay, so let me implement the dead zone now. So the way I want to do the dead zone is I wanted to go in an update function and when the shots are hitting enemies here, I'm just gonna put a dead zone test in here. So if this and this and, no, actually not here. I, it's fine if the shots hit the enemy, that's okay. I want to have the visual impact of the enemy being hit. I don't want to just the shots just fly through the enemy. I still want the shots to connect to the enemy when it's in the dead zone. I just don't want those shots to do any damage. Um, so here, this part, if e dot y is smaller or equals dead zone, oh no, if it's greater than dead zone. And actually not the center of the enemy, not the center of the enemy, the center of the bullet. I don't know if that's that's a good idea with a bullet. Ah, oh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure now. Let's try. Oh, it's got, it should be S, S, right? S, S, Y. If S, Y is greater than that zone, yes, then uh, we're gonna do actual damage to the enemy. Um, let's try this. So you see we're firing at the enemies and now we're firing at the enemies and they're not dying and they only die once they're, they're crossed the, this dead zone thing. Just want to make sure that we don't have an enemy all the way up there constantly. Like this yellow enemy at the top, it, it shouldn't cross that dead zone. But otherwise we're good, right? Let us do something like um, we only flash the enemy. 
if you're in dead zone. Yeah. So we have a little bit of indication of where an enemy is actually receiving damage. Now, it's actually so much fun to play the game already. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a lot of stuff happening. Maybe, maybe I'm I'm a bit of a simple person. Oh, see, mm, I didn't. Yeah, that was good. The, we programmed the chunky enemy to be just fly uh, uh, more quickly at the beginning, so it actually crosses the dead zone pretty quickly. But maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. It seems like we're fine. It seems like we're fine here. Which means cut off and dead zone are basic. I mean, that was pretty easy. <laughs> For being like these kinds of advanced gameplay tweaks, like, ooh, attention to detail. It's kind of compared to something like programming a UI for your editor. <laughs> it's pretty easy, just an if statement. Um, yeah, let's deal with the repetitive explosions. Okay, the problem is that we, um, this is going to be a bit of a, so this is shooting. This is like the, not an explosion, this is kind of like an instrument that we're using in an explosion. And we're actually using the first couple of notes only. This is just the result of a lot of us a lot, like doing a lot of experiments. Uh, we might actually shorten this later. But anyway, this is the actual explosion. And the problem is, this constantly, um, playing this constantly is a bit repetitive. Especially this latter part, this part here. This blue. This is just always the same and it just feels a bit repetitive. So what I want to do is maybe mix this up, maybe do like a little different melody uh, for some explosions. The problem is right after that, we get this sound effect and we kind of want this sound effect to... Be... I, w I want all of the explosions to be in after each other. Um, so let me, let me rescue the sound effect first. Uh, so one, let's make three explosions. That should be enough. And then we're going to put in this sound effect. And I'm going to kind of copy this explosion, put it in here, and then put it in here. So we have three explosions, two, three, and four is going to be these explosions. Now, SFX3, let's look for that. What? How what? Let's just look for any SFX. So that's where we're dying. Oh, yeah, yeah, because this sounds with zero. So uh, two is not, three is not, four is not, five. Let's see if that works. Oh. <laughs> okay, that was the correct sound effect, good. Um, so now for the explosions, let's explode. So here's the explosion. And so here we can do <sighs> R&D. We're going to see what is more efficient uh, because there's two ways of doing this and we're going to do it both ways, baby. Uh, so one, we want to re return a number between two and four. So one way of doing this is basically two plus floor R and B um, three. Right? So that would be nine tokens. Uh, the other one is to do, do like two, three, four. And that is six tokens. Yeah, we, we know. <laughs> oh, wait. Eight tokens, one token better. <laughs> if we had one more explosions, this would fly. Um, okay. Still sounds the same, um, but I am going to, so just like to see that we're actually having different explosions. Uh, I'm going to actually. Well. <laughs> Let's try. Okay, so um, we now know that these are being randomized. So now I will restore 
uh, those uh, explosion number two will remain the original explosion but here and now I want to mess around with the sound effect a little bit especially this uh, with this part here <laughs> not quite what I want let's just like mess around with this a little bit a little bit lower pitched and then maybe higher and then maybe like with breaks in between there and then maybe this is a little bit differently pitched as well. and maybe here let's try this yeah that's so much better now Except this is a little bit. I, let's let's make this. Yeah, this is better. Just making it a little bit more chunky. Let's try this. Yeah, just slightly the variations, so it's not no longer as repetitive. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Just adding a little bit more variation. If I feel it's more repetitive, then I, I will try to um, do some more variations. Making these jumpy things makes it a bit more choppy and that can feel more like um, it's the sound effect that I remember fondly from um, Super Mario Brothers when Super Mario hits the, the block. It also makes like this kind of blah, 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 this kind of like chunky, crispy. It sounds a little bit like rock splitting apart, you know, that kind of like like um, stones hitting against each other, like this clock, 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 clock. Um, and I think for an explosion, that's, that's actually pretty cool. So this is original. This is this now a little bit of more chunky stuff and more irregular fade out. This is... Mm. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do it really distinct from each other. So we're not getting... Maybe a little bit too distinct. Yeah. Wow, this is such a difference. This a bit in, in this. Let's try this. Okay, this is cool. This feels better. Good. All right, so repetitive explosions, done-zo. Um, wait when moving enemy. Hmm. Okay. Brain edit. And the idea here is that we, we can do no waiting here, and the enemy will shoot when it actually arrives at the target, right? Right now it's not shooting. Oh, and by the way, something I also wanted to add is maybe I want to add an overlay that actually shows me the position of the enemy. The, the current x and y position because when we are later animating the, uh, the 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 boss right we want to be able to you know know at which position the boss is so later we can move it to that position so we can do like those perfect loops um but for now let me let me uh, address this so what i want to do is i basically i want the moth command to be acting as a weight automatically so it doesn't actually do the fire until it arrives at its target. It, it, I think it makes sense to brain. Right, let me see what happens when we do wait. Quit equals true, right? So then when we do the mov. I also want to do the, the quit equals true. I want to exit the brain processing. And then here when we do the enemies, um, not only if wait, but also, yeah, not only the wait, but also if wait equals zero or moth x. All right, let's try this. Yeah, 
So now the firing only happens once the enemy arrives at its, at its target position, which is really what I want. I think of maybe speeding up this more, but we're gonna tweak this later on when we actually get to use this. We're gonna see how the timing out works, but this is good. Um, also, let me then, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> We can't stop tweaking the tools. Um, let me draw the position of the enemy. No, no, it's the cursed. <laughs> it's the cursed mini UI. <laughs> oh, no. All right, so I'm just like do some. I'm gonna do some bow stuff for now, just like to see if there's it's a good position. 128, comma 128, like this. Uh, and then x is correct, so y is going to be plus 9. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me show this. Okay, um, now I want x to be a little bit 98 maybe. Yep, that's good. Uh, further up though. So now we see like the location of where the enemy is uh, currently at. Um, and then I want to actually put the actual values in there. Do we have um, somewhere we are saving the enemy pro tag? So this is going to be uh, pro tag dot x, pro tag dot x, and dot dot, comma, dot dot, pro tag dot y. Something like this. Oh, right. Oh, comma values. Oh, I don't like that. Um, let's do a floor on those. I say comma values. Uh, is it dot values? Dot values? Point values. Yeah, yeah. Saving this. Wait when moving enemy. Done so. Okay, so the next one. It's gonna be a bit bigger. Mm, this is gonna be the shadow hover. You know what? Let's just try the shadow. Let's just see how it works and then maybe we're gonna make it better next episode. Let's see. Um, so the idea is that we want to draw a shadow underneath some of the enemies and maybe even underneath the player. Um, so here's where we're looping through all of the enemies and we're drawing them. But before we do that, we want to basically loop through the enemies again we want to loop through enemies twice. And <sighs> this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be cursed. So we're gonna loop through the enemies, uh, but only on the second layer. So basically we're gonna keep it at two. We don't need that loop here. Okay. So if layer equals two, then uh, flashing doesn't matter. Draw OBJ, no. Oh, by the way, I did like this um, this stuff here. We don't need that anymore. Um, what is this? MSPR, don't need that anymore. Uh, here, instead of draw OBJ, what I want to do instead is I want to do like a, let's go like a circ. Um, is it circ? Oh, well, circ, let's go circ. Yeah, circ. Uh, e dot x, uh, comma e dot y. Uh, size, let's go 10, color 2. Let's, let's see how that works. Where are the enemies? Okay, sir, okay. <laughs> I love it. First, circ fill, then <laughs> way too big, 2. But also we want to add something to the, to the Y position. Um, let's go 10. Okay, we have we have the little shadows. It's the wrong color. It should be one, maybe three is the correct size, uh, and then ten is I think a little bit too little. Let's go sixteen. Yeah, there we go. There, there we have the shadows. Ah, oh, they look so good already. Oh, it adds so much depth. Oh. <laughs> I'm keeping those. I'm keeping those. There's no. There's no way I'm not keeping those. Um, I want to try two things: uh, ellipses instead of sh of circles. I think that looks a little bit better. Um, and then maybe I'm gonna add 
um, dithering to them. Uh, let me try the ellipsis. Let's keep this around for now. Ellipsy uh, we, or oval. I think it was oval. Phil, right? Um, I have no idea how oval fill works. I think it was three, three, two. Let's let's try that like this. <laughs> okay. Hey, oh right, oval fill, oh no, this is cursed. This is cursed. Oval fill works like a rectangle. No, no, why would you, would you do this to me? Okay, um, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a little helper function, <laughs> my oval. <laughs> I have to. Function my oval. Um, oh, X. O Y O W O H uh, O C. So the idea is that. <laughs> oh no! Why? Why would you do this? Why are you doing this, Zep? What are you doing? <laughs> this is not how you draw an oval. Why? Why? Yeah, let's draw a circle. Let's first define the top left corner of the circle. <laughs> So the way ovals work is they work like a rectangle. You draw a rectangle and within this rectangle, it will draw the oval, which is like to me, you draw, you define a central center of the oval and you define a width and height of the oval. That seems like logical to me. I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to make it work the way we think it should work. Uh, so oval fill is... Ox minus Oy minus one. Uh, yeah, let let's call it. Yeah, okay. We we we're gonna work with radius. So Ow, right, right, and then Oy minus Oh, uh, and then Oa Ox plus with OI, OI plus height and then OC. <laughs> it's just 23 tokens to fix this mistake. Oh, <laughs> maybe maybe circles might be fine because of that. Uh, but yeah, let's try, try, let's try this. So this is now the way I think it should work. Let's make it 2-1. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, see? These are nice, but they're too small. Um, so let's go two here and three here. I should I should maybe move this the Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Okay, let's see how it looks like if we make it Fill P. There we go. Let's try this fill pattern. Mm, no, that's not good. Can do we have a better fill pattern? Oh, there, yeah, this one, this is the one, a bit more denser. The problem with the fill pattern is it's not moving, um, so it might look funky. Yeah, see, it's not, it's not moving. It's look, it looks a little bit, I don't know, I like the solid ones better. I like the solid ones better. What can I say? Um, yeah. And then we're also going to do a my oval underneath the player ship, which is a bit of a where is the player ship? PSPR, right? Like this. Oh yeah. Maybe, 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 maybe four on the oval fill. No, no four. Uh, oh no, that's that's the wrong oval. 
four. Yeah, that looks better. Problem is the oval is not perfectly centered now because, uh, man, the ovals that we're using, uh, this, this is driving me insane. Um, we have to do a minus one here. Mm, but now I'm second guessing myself. Yeah. Ah, this looks good. This looks really nice. Now, the, of course, the shadow on the big enemies is uh, is too small, so maybe we want to make that, that shadow a little bit bigger. Maybe we can define somewhere in the enemy in the enemy uh, function how big the, the shadow is. Uh, but yeah, that's something that we and then maybe we can like change also the distance. So now, once we add like these little effects, you might might want to tweak them a little bit. But you know what? That's going to be something that we're going to do in the next episode. So um, that's something that we're going to do for later. Shadow hover tweaking. For now, I kind of I like this. I like what we're doing here. Let us move on to the part at the end of each episode where I say that thing that I always say, which is thank you. Thank you so much for supporting this show on coffee.com. There are some people out there who are watching right now who are supporting this show on coffee.com who are making, literally making this show possible. And I would like to thank you so much for doing so. And also a little question from Matt Schmupper on an episode that I just recently released. Um, they ask, any chance you'll ever consider selling DVD of your coding vids kind of like a different DVD for each different bunch of tutorials uh, I, mm, I don't know if, if all the tutorials fit on one DVD <laughs> DVDs are kind of like ooh, um, a little bit of old, old tech but I definitely consider uh, making the tutorials available as a download somewhere so they know just no longer just like linked to the YouTube uh, but um, I'm considering doing maybe for example if the game comes out on itch or even uh, this steam like we're gonna have like a steam version of it then I definitely considering doing uh, some, some something like a tutorial DLC like a free tutorial D DLC where it's like I want to now find out how this game is being made and then you just download all of the videos on your hard drive. So you own the videos, right? So they no longer, t so you don't have to watch advertisements here on YouTube. And I have to say, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried that YouTube at some point will go full end certification, like so many other projects on the internet did recently. And, and, and then all of this information, all of this wealth of knowledge will be lost. So I want to preserve it differently somehow. Right, so we did. <laughs> I'm, I'm going a bit slower maybe this, on these things because these new things are a bit scary. But we did a lot of stuff today. These weren't hard things, they were just scary. Uh, next time I'm gonna do more tweaking with the shadow stuff. And then yeah, maybe bullet canceling, we're gonna see. See you next time around guys, bye bye.